filigree will be given three hours to perform Amra, starting and ending in the triad areas around the holy city of Makkah during the first stage of the resumption of Amra services. The first stage is scheduled to start on October 4th and will be operated through the Tamarna app. The plan is to have triad areas around the holy city, allowing 6,000 pilgrims to perform Umrah each day at six different times, with each group of 1,000 pilgrims being given three hours. Lebanon's Prime Minister designate resigned amid a political impasse over government formation, dealing a blow to French President Emmanuel Macron's efforts to break a dangerous stalemate in the crisis-hit country. The announcement by Mustafa Adib nearly a month after he was appointed to the job came following a meeting with President Michel Aoun, after which he told reporters he was stepping down. Adib's resignation comes a few days after Aoun himself bluntly told reporters that Lebanon would be going to hell if the new government was not formed soon. French judges will soon have the option of requiring electronic tracking ankle bracelets for domestic violence offenders as the country grapples with a growing number of women killed by current or former partners. The measure, which has long been sought by rights advocates, was passed by Parliament this year and will be gradually rolled out starting Friday. The GPS monitor alerts women as well as police if known abusers get to within a certain distance of their victims. The United Nations and Britain said Wednesday they would co-host a global climate summit on December 12, the fifth anniversary of the landmark Paris Agreement. The announcement came days after Chinese President Xi Jinping told the UN that the world's largest greenhouse gas polluter would peak emissions in 2030 and attempt to go carbon neutral by 2060, a move hailed by environmentalists. The world remains off track to limit global temperature rise to 1.5 degrees Celsius by the end of the century, which scientists say is crucial to prevent runaway warming that would leave vast swathes of the planet inhospitable to life. Greek government spokesperson Stelos Petsas said Greece and Turkey will resume exploratory talks over contested maritime claims of the eastern Mediterranean. After a four-year hiatus, Turkey and Greece have agreed to resume the talks following weeks of tensions that culminated in a collision between warships. Greece had said this week that the talks, which broke off in 2016 after 60 rounds that made little progress over 14 years, would resume in the near future in Istanbul. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau said that Canada is in a second wave of COVID-19 and wound. The country is on the brink of a fall season that could be much worse than the spring. Trudeau noted that when Canada went to lockdown March 13, there were 47 new confirmed cases of COVID-19 and that Tuesday alone, Canada had well over 1,000. Many provinces slowly reopened over this summer. Trudeau urged Canadians to keep wearing masks and to download the government's COVID app that lets a person know if they've come in close contact with someone who has tested positive. The European Union said that President Alexander Lukashenko is not the legitimate president of Belarus, saying his abrupt swearing-in on Wednesday went directly against the will of the people. The State Department said the U.S. no longer recognizes Lukashenko as the legitimate president of Belarus, hours after he was officially sworn in for a seventh term. The presidential press office said in a statement, Lukashenko's swearing-in ceremony took place at Independence Palace in the capital Minsk. 
The FBI and the main U.S. cybersecurity agency warned that provocators could take advantage of a slow vote count in the November 3rd election to spread disinformation aimed at discrediting the result. They said such actions could be attempts to discredit the electoral process and undermine confidence in U.S. democratic institutions. They noted that because of an expected massive surge in voting by mail due to the coronavirus pandemic, local election officials could require days to fully count ballots and announce the results. The Afghani government's lead negotiator, Abdullah Abdullah, said a number of Taliban prisoners who were released by the Afghan government as a condition for peace talks have taken up arms again. Abdullah, the chairman of Afghanistan's High Council for National Reconciliation, said discussions with the Taliban in Qatar so far have been positive. However, he said some, though not the majority, of the 5,000 Taliban prisoners released by the government as a condition for talks had resumed the fight against Kabul. Russia dismissed the threat of U.S. sanctions and attempts to isolate Iran, saying it intended to trade with Tehran once a U.N. arms embargo expires next month. The embargo on conventional arms shipments to Iran is set to expire on October 18, after the United States failed to win support for a new U.N. resolution. The administration of U.S. President Donald Trump says it has decided to unilaterally reinstate virtually all of the UN sanctions on Iran lifted under a 2015 nuclear accord with Tehran. Turkish prosecutors have issued warrants for the detention of 82 people, including a number of pro-Kurdish former lawmakers. As part of an investigation into deadly riots, six years ago by Kurds angered at what they perceived to be the government's inaction against IS military group who had besieged the Syrian border town of Cobain. It was not immediately clear why the investigation against the 82 people was launched six years after the rioting. The three days of clashes in early October of 2014 were the worst in Turkey in recent years, resulting in 37 deaths and leaving hundreds of others, police and civilians, injured. A UN panel says tax abuse, corruption and money laundering are draining hundreds of billions of dollars from governments that could help the world's poor. A report from the high-level panel on international financial accountability, transparency and integrity published Thursday said governments can't agree on the problem or the solution, but they're also losing an estimated 500 billion US dollars due to corporate tax avoidance from profit-sharing enterprises. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov discussed with his Iranian counterpart Mohammad Jawad Zarif the situation in Syria. The Russian minister stressed that launching the Syrian Constitutional Committee does not constitute a substitute for the political process and the implementation of 2,245. Separately, Russia's permanent representative to the UN in Geneva, Gina de Gatilov told Sputnik that the next session of Syria's Constitutional Committee could be held in October, adding that the exact date will depend on the situation of the COVID-19 pandemic. <laughs>